Welcome to my ultimate posture guide for wheelchair users. It's something that we've always been told to pay attention to. Sit up straight is something you've probably heard multiple times, especially as a wheelchair user. But don't feel like you need to straighten up just because I said that. What if I told you that the reality was much more nuanced than either good posture or bad posture? So what do we do? Well, in this video today, we're gonna to be exploring some common myths that you may have heard, but I'm not just gonna be telling you what's wrong. I'm gonna give you some real world advice and give you some actual exercise and plans to be able to do what you need to do in this situation. So let's start with our myths. And myth number one is that upright posture is good and slouching is bad. In reality, we don't want to think as postures as either good or bad. Sitting up nice and straight and tall is really good for our appearance and it helps with stuff like breathing, but this is hard to hold and it can get tiring quite quickly, which can make us tired throughout the day. And slouching isn't necessarily bad. It's been proven by science that it can help you focus on the task at hand. In fact, whilst writing this script to this video, I was pretty slouched the whole time. So if these positions aren't good or bad, what should we be doing? So where this problem lies is staying in one position for too long. And while I explain this next bit, I want you to keep something in mind, that your best posture is your next posture. And what I mean by that is that we want to be consistently moving on a regular basis. That's because our bodies are adaptation machines. When we stay locked in this position, hunched over, yes, we can get the benefits of being focused on the task at hand. What happens is some muscles get shorter and others get weaker, so we're more efficient at staying in this position. And even if we stay locked up in this position, what happens is that when we do need to bend over, our bodies aren't used to it and it can cause problems in our back. So the best thing to do is to keep moving and to think of another phrase, which is motion is lotion. Keep that body moving and it keeps it lubricated. We can do this by lifting, shuffling and many other things, which also has another benefit for us wheelchair users, which is less risk of pressure sores. Next up, let's talk about myth number two, which is if you fix your posture, then you fix your pain. Now, yes, this is very much linked to what we were just talking about, but let's dive into it a bit further. Within scientific literature, there is no real link between posture and pain. We think our muscles get tight from sitting in a position for too long. When in reality, a tight muscle isn't tight, it's actually a weak muscle. And that's because your muscle isn't strong enough to deal with what you're putting it through. So the best thing we can do here to solve that is to incorporate resistance training in our everyday life. Building up strength builds resilience in our muscles, tendons, and ligaments, which helps us to hold positions and be able to move more efficiently between them, which moves us nicely onto point three, which you can't fix poor posture with some simple stretches. As I mentioned, tight muscles aren't really tight, they're just weak. So the best thing we can do is not to stretch those muscles out, because what we can do is actually make the muscles weaker for a longer range of motion. What we need to do is to strengthen them up instead. Yes, we want long muscles, but we want long, strong muscles. Long, strong muscles are able to move us into the positions that we need them to, but also support them when we're in that position. Long and strong is key. And myth number four, that bad posture is worth fixing. We've already mentioned that the best thing to do is to make sure you're nice and mobile and strong. If you're already doing strength work and mobility work, and you don't really have any pain, then you probably don't need to worry about your posture. And as long as you're not in one for too long, a position that's considered bad is probably not something you need to worry about. In fact, it's been shown that those who hyper-focus about their posture and worried about their seating position tend to experience and catastrophize pain more than those who don't. And as long as we're doing our strength and mobility work, our posture may not be a problem worth fixing. And that's totally fine. So moving on to some of the problems that we have as wheelchair users, and one of them is pretty obvious, is that we're sitting all day long. So we're locked into a position for a long time and it may be impossible to strengthen certain muscles. I, for example, can't use anything below my chest. So strengthening up my lower back, my hip flexors, my leg muscles aren't really gonna help because it's impossible. But that doesn't mean I should just give up altogether. I need to mobilize and strengthen what I can do to get the maximum results from it. It's better to do something than nothing. And that's where my three step approach comes into play, which is to mobilize, stretch and strengthen. Mobilizing the joints helps to get our body moving so we're able to get into different positions. Stretching helps the mobilization by keeping the muscles nice and long and strengthening the muscles allows us to hold those positions 
more effectively for a longer time. First of all, let's get all loosey-goosey with some mobility drills. This is the first step and serves as a crucial foundation for the other stuff that we're doing. This is because the added mobility allows us to move more freely and to be able to do the other exercises. Our spine is where we start our mobility journey. The spine is made up of tiny little bones called vertebrae and they help with four distinct movements. We've got flexion, extension, rotation and lateral flexion. These help us to bend, extend, rotate and laterally bend as well. And remember earlier in the video we said that motion is lotion so it's important to move the vertebrae through their natural motions frequently. And I'm going to give you some little drills here so you can do exactly that. And we're going to start at the top of our spine with the vertebrae in our neck. And the first exercise here combines both flexion and extension together. And what we do nice and simple is bring the chin down to the chest and then extending that looking up to the sky. And then in your own time, just gliding back and forth, looking down and looking up. When we look down, we're getting the flexion. And then when we look up, we're getting the extension. Moving into the next exercise, we want to go into rotation. So we look to the left, rotating that head round. And then round to the right, going back and forth nice and gentle and controlled between the two. And then the final one for the neck is the lateral flexion. That's where we bring one ear to one shoulder and then one ear to the other shoulder. And nice and gentle gliding back and forth between the two. Now with all of those movements, you don't wanna go for a really stretch position. You just wanna get your vertebrae moving. It's just about motion. It's not about trying to get a good stretch in here. We're now going to take the rest of our spine through this journey too, starting with the flexion extension and again we can combine them together. To do this you curl forward to get the flexion and then you extend through to get the extension. I like to think of this as you curl over like a prawn and then you extend through like a high jumper. Making sure we get a nice curve in that spine, not just bending forwards and sitting up straight but actually activating the spine there. Next up we're going to do some rotation and to do this we simply rotate from one side, we can use our arms to assist and then move around to the other side and gently glide back and forth between the two. With this the key thing to think about is keeping your hips still and only rotating your shoulders round and you're always imagining your spine is ringing like a towel moving through that movement. And the last one in our vertebrae here is the lateral flexion and we bend down to one side and then down to the other side. On this we don't want to just bend like this, we want to curl over so that spine is moving kind of like a banana over to the side and then over to the other side. Don't worry if you can't reach the floor, just go as far as you can do. And just like we said with the neck, we're not focusing on the stretch, we're just focusing on the movement through those four ranges of motion. And lastly, we're gonna do a mobility drill focusing on our shoulders. Now to do this, I've grabbed a resistance band, which is the ideal thing for this. But if you don't have one, you can use a pole or a towel or a t-shirt or something too. Hold the band about shoulder width apart or maybe a little bit more and rotate it round as far as you can go. And if you can go all the way down, that's fantastic. And going all the way back again. If you can't go all the way around with it, just get to where you can and then bring it back down again. The great thing about using resistance band is that as you get to here, if you need to bend it out more, you can still get all the way over with the band. Now as you do more of this, you'll get better at your shoulder mobility. So you may need to bring the hand in and go a little bit shallower, but you can adjust that as you need to go wider and shorter depending on what mobility range you've got in your shoulders. This movement adds flexibility and mobility to that shoulder joint, but always make sure that you're doing it nice and controlled, and if you feel any pain on this, just stop. As for the amount you need to do, don't worry about that just yet, just focus on the form. Stick around to the end of the video, because I'm gonna show you how much you should be doing of each of these exercises and the upcoming ones. As I said, for now, just focus on the form itself. Okay, so now we are going to look at stretching our chest, and to do this, the best place to do it is on a door frame. You want to line yourself up, so you're about perpendicular here. Put your brakes on and bring the arm up so the elbow's in line with the shoulder. And then from there, you're just gonna simply rotate away from it. And then you can change the hand positioning to feel where it feels right for you. And you can always 
move forwards if you need to increase that stretch. But pull yourself away from it and you'll start to feel that chest stretch there. Okay, so next up we're gonna perform a lat stretch. And to do this, you need a countertop or a table around about chest height. We're gonna put both hands on it here and we're going to push our chest down towards the ground so our arms extend in front of us here and we can reach forwards. From here, if you need to increase the stretch, you can bring the hands together and push yourself further away and push your chest down even more through this movement. And lastly, we're going to be stretching our rotator cuffs here. For this, we're going to put arms out to the side. You can have one palm facing down and the other palm facing up. And what you want to do is rotate them round, one going down, one going round, and rotate them back and forth between the two. What you'll actually find on this is the stretch goes all the way through your forearm, your elbows, the upper arm, and into the rotator cuffs themselves. And the last part of our three-part method is to strengthen our muscles. Now for this, it's important to strengthen every muscle that you can with a full upper body routine. So what I'm gonna do here is to show you some exercises to hit some muscles that you might be missing. So the muscles that are likely not targeted are those that make up your back muscles and also your rotator cuffs too. Firstly, let's start with these rotator cuff muscles. They're little tiny muscles that sit deep within your shoulder and they rotate the upper arm. Most daily activities like pushing our wheelchairs and typing on a computer put our shoulders in an internally rotated position. This makes the external rotators weak. So what we wanna do is add balance back to these rotator cuff muscles by doing resistance exercises that works the external rotators. A great one here is the cable external rotation, which if you don't have access to a cable can also be done with a resistance band too. First of all, you want the anchor point at elbow height. Sit perpendicular to it. And if the anchor is on your right side, grab it with your left hand. And if it's on your left side, grab it with your right hand. You want to keep the elbow tucked in throughout the whole movement here. Only rotating the upper arm, you want to pull it right across your body until it's as far as you can go and then lower it slowly back down to the beginning again. So now let's talk about our back muscles. And when it comes to these back muscles, we want to be working in three planes of motion, straight back, incline and decline. This is so we can fully target the back and all of its muscles. So first of all, let's talk about pulling the weight straight back. And one of the best exercises to do this is the cable row. To perform a cable row, first of all, sit facing the cable machine and have the handle around about chest height. Then you wanna grab that handle and with the elbow leading the movement, pull it down towards your side. The whole time, try and keep your back straight. And once you've fully pulled that back, slowly release it back to the starting position. This exercise can also be done with the resistance bands by tying it up to a similar height, or you can also do it with dumbbells too, by leaning forwards and pulling the weights up against gravity. You can also mix it up with exercises like the bent over fly or the cable crossover, which targets more of the rear deltoids. Or you can do a cable face pull that also involves some rotator cuff action too. Next, we wanna do similar movements, but go in an incline direction. We can do this either by setting the cable or resistance band lower. Then with that, you row it diagonally upwards. We can also do the fly movements in an incline position too, or if you're using dumbbells, you can perform shrugs. All of these put more focus on the upper back muscles like the traps. And lastly, we wanna do exercise in a decline direction. And you may have already guessed, but to do this, we wanna set the cable higher and row it downwards. These exercises will target our largest back muscles, the lat. With this, a better movement than a row is a lat pull down. It's quite similar to a row, but the arms start out to the side and pull down into your midline. This is because the lat's other movement is to bring the arm into the center line. Another great decline exercise is straight arm rows. This is similar to the previous fly movements that we talked about because it also focuses on the rear deltoids. By doing these three ranges of motion, we can exercise our back fully and target all of the muscles. And the reason we're putting so much focus into these back muscles is to counteract our daily lives. With sitting all day, pushing our wheelchairs, typing and transferring, we use all the muscles in the front, like the chest and the shoulders much more. What happens here is that we get a muscular imbalance, which means there's a higher risk of injury. So by doing these exercises, we are balancing the scales to be much more well-rounded in our muscular development. This doesn't mean we should only be training our back. Like I mentioned earlier, 
we want to be exercising every part of our body that we can. But I see so often that the back is under exercise and under work. So I wanted to make that a priority for you. So that's our three step plan. Here on the screen is a full rundown of all of the exercises and how much to do and when to do them. But if you wanna download this to your phone or print it out, then head to the link down below and that will take you to a place where you can get a free download for this program. And to finish here, let's recap what we've learned today in this video. Essentially, when it comes to our posture, there isn't such a thing as good or bad posture. What we wanna do is stay as mobile as possible through changing our posture and through doing mobility drills. We also want to strengthen our muscles to be able to support ourselves no matter what position we're in. With that, we can make sure that we are staying healthy in our bones, joints and ligaments and tendons and muscles and everything else. It can help us stay pain-free and do all of the activities that we need to do to live the life that we want to live. If you did like this video, guys, first of all, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got all that you needed from this. If you haven't got everything you needed, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll be sure to help you on your posture journey. If you did like the video though, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel and it sends this to the algorithm that tells other people that they need to watch this too. So by liking it, you help everybody else out too. And if you're new here or you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and check out more great videos like this for us wheelchair users to live a better life through fitness. Again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Are you ready to start your fitness journey? Then sign up now at adaptandperform.co.uk and get access to hundreds of workouts specifically for us wheelchair users.